Okay, so welcome back. Um, what I have here is my guitar. Uh, unfortunately, I don't own a violin or a cello or anything like that, but I do happen to have a bow. And so in this video, I wanna talk about the bowing of a string and how the bow actually manages to drive the oscillation of the string continuously as long as I'm moving the bow across the string. Okay, so there's some interesting small scale physics going on here that we're going to understand uh, to really see why, why this bowing actually works. So the main thing that distinguishes bowing from hammering the string like in, a, in the hammer dulcimer or the piano or plucking the string like the guitar or a harpsichord or a harp um, is that your continuously adding energy. So instead of just displacing the string or giving it some velocity at the start, the bow is actually doing something like the demo where I took an oscillator, a mass on a spring, and just applied a periodic force to the top that had a frequency similar to the natural frequency of my oscillator. And then that gave rise to a continuous oscillation with a significant amplitude. Okay, another example of this is when you have a skipping rope and you have two people on either end of the skipping rope and just by oscillating their hands a little bit they can give the skipping rope a large amplitude and that goes continuously as long as they're applying this periodic force okay so how does the bow apply a periodic periodic force it actually doesn't look like it's doing anything um periodic so so well, the bow is going back and forth, but that's you know, not very frequently, whereas the string is vibrating very rapidly. So even when the bow is just going in one direction, it's managing to drive the oscillation of the string. So the reason that this actually works and the thing that's going on at the kind of microscopic level is that there is this periodic pattern of sticking and slipping where the bow originally kind of grabs on to the string and it drags it in one direction for a certain amount and then at some point the string slips and travels in the other direction and so while it's traveling in the opposite direction from the bow it's just slipping against the hair of the bow uh, but then when the string comes back starts oscillating backward in the direction of the bow again uh, then it gets stuck to the bow and the bow kind of drags it along. And so the bow is like continuously displacing and then letting go and then displacing and then letting go and displacing and letting go. And so I can say all of those words, but really what we want to do is see this in action. And so I found a few great videos or a couple of great videos that really allow us to visualize this because someone actually took a super slow-mo camera and zoomed in on a bow that's uh, being dragged across a string. Okay, so let's have a look here. Uh, this is the first video and so we'll load that up. Okay, so here it's dragging the string and it slips and it drags the string and it slips and it drags the string and it slips. And so this is the same period, this is way slowed down. So this is the period of the oscillation of that string. It's just that uh, everything is sl slowed down a lot so that we can see the sticking and slipping. Okay, and so then even though the bow is only moving in one direction, uh, you do get this repetitive application of the force and so in the next video, we're going to see how that affects the entire length of the string. So let me grab that. And so what they've done in this next video, just to kind of emphasize the overall motion of the string, they've taken a string and detuned it, so lowered the tension down so that we're going to get actually quite a large amplitude. But originally the string is stationary and you'll be able to see what this repetitive uh, dragging and slipping action of the bow does to the violin string. 
Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So I'll just load that one up here for us. Okay. So not much going on yet, but just watch. Okay, so, so again, what's happening at the end here is the dragging of the string and then it slips back and it's dragged and it slips back. And so this is just a periodic force being applied to the string, really just like when you're, when you're using a, a skipping rope. And you see that, uh, you can, actually you can almost see the, this wave pulse traveling back. So when we originally displace the string, that creates a wave pulse that's traveling back and forth on the string. And as we send the bow, the amplitude becomes larger and larger because we are continue every time the string oscillates in the direction of motion of the bow, the bow is actually acting with a force on the string. Okay. And so this is, a, as I said, a larger amplitude than you would normally have in playing the instrument because the tension has been lowered down in order to allow the string to be a little bit more floppy for the demonstration. Okay, and so just a question for you to think about now, um, which is why would a faster bow speed produce a louder sound? So I just wanted to show you quickly here I think you can see this. Um, let me go back to my view here. Okay, so just to demonstrate, um, if I if I play this very slowly, okay, so then you get a very quiet sound, and if I play a little bit faster, it's louder, and if I play even faster. It's louder, louder. Playing. Why is it that a faster bow motion would lead to a louder sound for a bowed instrument? Okay, so maybe pause the video and think about that for a moment. So that the hint, I guess, is that the period of motion of the string is fixed. So there's just some natural oscillation frequency for the string. And so you need to think about, well, what's happening with the bow and why would the bow moving faster cause there to be a louder sound? Okay, so, well, let's, let's talk about it. So basically, the point is that if the bow is dragging the string when the string is moving this way, so the string's moving back and forth at a fixed frequency, and so if the bow is dragging the string when the string is moving this way, but then the string slips, then we can say that the bow is pulling on the string for one half of a period of the, of the string's motion. So just while the string is moving this way. And so that's a particular amount of time, half a period. It doesn't, doesn't matter whether we have a big amplitude or a small amplitude. Remember the period of the frequency doesn't change. And so it's, if it's a fixed amount of time, that means that when the bow is going faster, then it is going to be dragging the string along with it a longer distance. So the distance that the string gets dragged um, each time before slipping is gonna be larger if the bow is moving faster because that distance is half the period times the velocity of the bow. Okay, and so what that means is that we're just going to naturally end up getting a larger amplitude. So if you're displacing that string a longer distance each time, you're going to end up with a larger amplitude of oscillation of the string. And then we know that a larger amplitude leads to a louder sound. Okay, okay so just to kind of summarize things here, we've talked about various kinds of stringed instruments and there are quite a lot of different factors that go into how those sound. And so just to review some of those things, this combination of harmonics that we have that characterize our sound and also how those depend on time. So those are gonna depend on 
how you're adding energy to the string, whether the string is struck with a hammer or plucked or bowed. Um, we've previously talked about how those are going to depend on the composition and the tension of the string and the length of the string. And in the previous lecture today, we also talked about how it's going to depend on how the instrument itself is naturally wanting to vibrate. So the vibrational modes of the body of the instrument and also the air inside the instrument. So all of these things go into the overall sound of the instrument. And I guess this is why it's, it's easy to build something that makes sound, but to build a great violin or a beautiful sounding guitar, it takes, uh, well, really a lot of trial and error and, uh, and, and mastery of this trade of instrument building.